Hey, Indian Creek 8th grade students, it's Professor Blazek, and today I want to talk to you about Genius Hour. This is a project that we talked about a little bit before. I wanted to gauge your interest, and so we're going to get it started. And I wanted to make this video as just an introduction for how Genius Hour is actually going to work. So, first of all, what is Genius Hour? Genius Hour comes from a Google business idea and it's something that we're transferring into the classroom and, and what Google did is they decided that they were going to allow their programmers to spend about one day a week or 20 percent of their time working on their passion projects so not necessarily something that they were assigned to work on but something related to technology and programming that they were interested in and the reason they did this is because they thought that giving their programmers this time would a break up the sort of monotony sometimes that you can get in work you know if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again and it also gave them the opportunity to put really smart people in a position where they were going to be working on something that they were really interested in which means that they would likely be putting a lot of work and a lot of effort an interest into these projects and so what has happened is that some of Google's most important creations like Gmail and Google Talk or Google Hangout I think as it's now called started as Genius Hour projects and then the company was actually able to take them and make them apps so we're gonna use that same idea in the classroom so the reason we're doing this is that it is a chance for you to look at and research your own passion projects. And so instead of giving a short story or a novel that you have to write about and read, or just a small list of topics that you have to create a presentation on, you're going to get to choose any topic that you want, research it, and present on it. And we're going to be working on our Genius Hour projects for one class period per week, usually on Fridays. And you're going to be allowed to work on whatever part of the project you need. So if you need to be researching, you can be researching. If you're going to be creating your visual aid, you can be doing that. Uh, and of course, you can always work on it outside of class. But you are going to have one day every week that is just for your Genius Hour projects. Now, I know that we have talked about this before, but as we've said, there are learning standards that all students are expected to meet during their eighth grade year. The things that we're supposed to teach you and the things that you're supposed to be able to do by the time you leave eighth grade. But instead of just going with the same things that have always been done in education, Genius Hour is a way to kind of give more options for you to meet those standards and so what I mean is in doing this project the standards that are given for students on researching on writing and on presenting they're all going to be covered by genius hours so you're still meeting those educational standards but you're getting the chance to do it in a way that's different that is allowing you to be more creative uh, and is giving you the opportunity to meet these standards using something that you're really interested in and want to work on instead of something that you're forced to work on. So how does Genius Hour work? First of all, there are only three rules of Genius Hour. I'm, I'm trying to give you as much freedom and as much choice as possible. So the three rules, first of all, your project has to involve research. So if you're looking at something that we could find out in just a quick Google search we're gonna to have to make it a little bit more in-depth we're gonna to have to tweak it that's not to say that you can't do a topic that's similar to what you've chosen we just have to make it so that it's a little bit more challenging to find out uh, the second rule is you have to create something so every project is gonna have some sort of visual aid that goes along with that and we'll talk about that more later in the video and then finally you must present something so you're going to be presenting your projects to the class and you're going to be submitting a written summary of your project as well basically showing here's what I found in my research and now let me tell you about it so at the start of the quarter we're gonna have some planning days for you to choose 
your genius hour topic. They're just going to be brainstorming. You know, you get ideas on paper, and then you decide what you want to do your presentation on. So first of all, write down a list of things that you're interested in, things that you have read about or learned that maybe you would like to explore more deeply, just anything that you could see yourself wanting to do a genius hour project on. And so once you've made your list, look over it and then choose the topic that you want to use for your project. And keep in mind that assuming that this project goes well, that you all enjoy doing it, we will be doing more Genius Hour projects throughout the year. My plan is one per quarter. And so if there are a couple that you're sort of torn between, pick one and just remember that the next time when we start our Genius Hour projects, you already have an idea of something that you'll want to use. And then what you will do with your topic is create an essential question. And this is the question that you're going to be trying to answer through your research and then presenting those answers. And again, make your essential question something that's complex, something that's interesting, so that it's going to require some solid in-depth research to answer. Because if this is something that you're passionate about, you really want to be able to sort of dive deeply into it. You don't want to just look at just surface level information. So if you're struggling with this, this is something that we can definitely work on together so that your essential question is as deep as it needs to be. So if you look at the Genius Hour sheet that I gave you, the first step that we just talked about is coming up with your interests, the things that you might want to research. And I just wrote down six things that you know maybe people would be interested in. Uh, it's very broad as far as there's a number of different areas that are covered. And once you've come up with your list, you can think about which ones you want to focus on and then move on down here to step two, which is coming up with your essential question. So for example, I have chosen to use my example project on finding out more about the circulatory system. You now I want to learn about the heart, how it works, how blood's transferred through the body, how, how everything functions. So the essential question that I came up with is how does the heart function to pump blood throughout the body and what other body parts are involved in transferring blood? So this is something that you couldn't just jump on Google and in five minutes have found out all the important information. So this is what I'm talking about in making a deep and complex essential question. And so step three is that once you've composed your essential question, once you're happy with it, once it's something that's, that's going to be challenging and also interesting for you to research, you're going to create what's called a KWH chart to begin planning your project. And this is something that you might have seen before. It's a common pre-planning step and the three parts of the KWH chart are what do I know about my topic already, what do I want to know about my topic, and then how can I find the information I need. So let's jump back over to my example and see how that works. So back here in my example sheet here's my KWH chart all filled out. Um, I'm not going to read through everything obviously because you can see it right here on the screen, uh, but you see that I've got four different things that I already know about my topic, four pretty basic things about the circulatory system. Then I've got five different things that I'd like to know, things that are important to the topic, information that I'm going to need to make my project as good as possible, and then some ideas of how I can find the information. So researching websites, looking at diagrams, and even, in this example, maybe even emailing a local medical office to see if there's a doctor or nurse, some healthcare professional, who could also give me some answers to the questions that I have. So this is how you would fill out your KWH chart, the third step in planning your project. And now once you have finished coming up with your KWH chart, the next step you have is to decide what kind of visual aid you're going to use to explain your essential question. Now there are a bunch of different examples that you can choose from. The list that I've included here is not like an end-all be-all there are other options if you think of one that you'd like to use that you absolutely can just whatever you feel most comfortable with and also you feel is going to make your project the best that it possibly can be so if you're artistic you could go into creating a poster a comic book a painting uh, doing some photography 
if you want to do a physical presentation where you're actually demonstrating how to do something, that works as well. You can create websites, you can create videos, anything that you are comfortable with that is going to make your project as good as it can be is on the table as far as visual aids are concerned. And so for my example, because remember I'm looking at how the circulatory system works, giving information, I feel that a couple different visual aids would be the best way for me to go. So first of all, I'd like to create a model of the circulatory system so that instead of just talking about how it works, I can actually show how the circulatory system works. And then I would also like to create a Weebly presentation, and Weebly is an online presentation resource. It's kind of like PowerPoint, but it's much more creative. It gives you much more freedom in how your information looks and what you can include. So I feel as though between those two would be the best way for me to go as far as the visual aid on explaining my topic on the circulatory system. And then your final planning step, you're almost done, is to create a project map, which is essentially you're going to plan out how you're going to finish your project. So you're going to be thinking about obviously what you need to research, but also any materials that you're going to need for your visual aids, any apps or websites you're going to have to find or sign up for, just everything that goes into your project. And then once you've completed this, you can come up and get it checked, and then you're ready to start your research. And so if you look at my example plan, you can see that I've listed on the left side of the screen four different areas that I want to make sure that I can research in class. And then I've also included that I'm going to need to sign up for Weebly and create my presentation. Uh, I'm going to have to go get the materials that I need to create my model and also obviously create the model. And then last, which is something that I think is important and really shouldn't be forgotten, is to practice presenting before I actually give my presentation in class. And the reason for this is if you don't ever practice presenting something before you give it in front of a group, odds are that you're going to be much more reliant on just reading from your presentation and it's just not going to sound as good because everybody can read what is on your presentation and you want to actually be adding more things while you're talking. Uh, and it just seems much more professional in that way. But also, the odds are much higher that if you're presenting for the first time in front of the group, you're going to forget points that you really want to make and are going to make your project that much better. So practicing a couple times at least before you present is definitely something that would be worth doing. Uh, and that's it. Those are the five steps that you have to do before you're ready to start jumping into your research and getting your project going. Um, I hope that this video has been very helpful in explaining the different steps that are going to go into getting ready for our Genius Hour projects. I'm very excited to be trying these projects out. I think that it's going to be great for all of you to have the chance to present on what you're interested in and to make this change to our curriculum because I think that it's something that just everybody's going to enjoy. And so, uh, again, this has been Professor Blazek. I'm signing off. I just want to wish all of you a lot of fun and good luck in creating your Genius Hour projects.